we had a, a, a house hearing uh, where Car uh, Carson uh, Kilini was the vice uh, vice chair uh, of the committee. It allowed us to um, make a comment on the HR 560, which is the uh, long-term status uh, of our uh, guest workers. And uh, as you know, I've been an advocate for long-term status since I was in the Senate. Uh, so um, my testimony is in full support of the long-term status for our guest workers for numerous reasons. One, of course, is to uh, maintain families together. Second, is to acknowledge their stay here in Saipan and their contribution. And then third is um, economic uh, viability and stability of not just them uh, in staying in the cinema and I'd be able to stay here in the cinema for basically forever. Uh, but also business community can now uh, project in the future of their employees on the investments, as well as uh, individuals uh, can now stay in the cinema, uh, cinema only. Uh, so that's, that's the good news that we have. Uh, I want to share that uh, Congressman and Ranking Member uh, Rob, Rob Bishop was there. And as you know, he um, introduced the bill last year for the extension. And because of his role, uh, made a big impact in, in supporting the long term. And as well as the, um, the H2B bringing back in the Philippines uh, into the uh, countries of H2B workers. <coughs> we also had several other congressmen that was there in support of, of the bill and the approach of bringing back construction workers um, to the CNMI, especially to the recovery effort uh, that we have ongoing. We have over 5,900 uh, homes that American Red Cross uh, did an assessment, whether it's completely damaged or some, some damage one way or another. Um, so we do need construction workers here. And one of the discussions that we had was to allow at least construction workers be in, entertained back in the ACW program, uh, at least for any um, disaster that the president declares uh, and give us five years, or any state, um, five years for the recovery. And again, uh, I think that the Congress that was there was very receptive. And we actually got a good uh, response from them. One Congress uh, is from Texas, who normally goes against, uh, not favorable against immigration. After hearing our concern, made us made a, a comment that he's willing to make this an exception. So if our overstay is at one percent, then at least you know that's the whole. That was the whole message that we, we brought to DC, was to give us the flexibility. Because at 1%, I don't see why we should be uh, included into removing Philippine into the H2B visa uh, waiver for the construction or, or the CW for that matter. And so, you know, us being on this side of the world, uh, Philippine being the closest, and we've echoed that Philippine country into the H2B is not just a country into the construction of the world, but really it's families here uh, that has affected uh, the opportunity to grow. And I said that the infrastructure that we see today was mostly built by the Philippine, uh, Philippine uh, construct, uh, construction workers or contract workers. But we paint a picture that for every day that they don't act on, there's more than, than 4,000, 5,000 homes just on the recovery that's still without roof and that if it weren't for the CBs and red horses 546 homes will still be without roof that doesn't mean that the others have roof those are just temporary roof that are able to, to be uh, to construct within three days we still have homes that I mean working with FEMA to, to build homes for more than three four hundred uh, families and that's the that was the message is that 
We're 8,000 miles away. They make decisions out here that they've never been. That's why having Congressman Bishop, Amata, and the other Congress who've been here, it's easy for them to support our cause because they see the difference, they see the need. Um, and that's, that's what we're trying to, to bring that information. Well, there's two things, right? One is that the number that we have, we're about 52% U.S. workers and then 48% uh, contract workers. Uh, again, with the denials we've so far, uh, the H-2B denials, some of the CW, we need construction workers here more than we need other occupations. And I've, and I've pictured this also that if, an ho if a hotel has 150 employees, 45 or 50 employees are non-resident, 100 are locals. If we don't renew those non-resident, the hotel will shut down. So are we providing 100 U.S. workers or are we denying workers now that CW if they're not approved? So it's, it goes hand in hand. The more U.S. workers we have, the more opportunities and more that we need non-resident because different occupations are needed differently. After the infrastructure is, is done, uh, we won't be needing construction workers. Now we're going to shift to janitorial, um, housekeeping, and different occupation uh, as we move forward on, on different phases of the project. You know, we made with the White House is important and they know that we are on board on this. Again, this long-term status is, 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 you need a legislative fix on it. Mm -hmm. It's not something that, you know, we just wake up one day and, and think it's going to happen. Uh, obviously, anything with immigration, it's not just this administration, it's every administration. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I'm just happy that now there's a legislation on board saying that we acknowledge long-term status and we are pushing for it. And I've been pushing for it uh, since day one.